Hello and welcome to Talking Baseball. It's episode number 598, and we're getting you ready for the trade deadline in six months or so. So here we go. Let's talk some ball. Hello and welcome to Talking Baseball. Today's episode is brought to you by SeatGeek, code Talking. My name's Jimmy. We got Trev, California. Jake sitting next to me in BBD behind the dish. Jake, how you doing? James, Trevor, Davis. Happy February to you guys. We already did that, but I'm doing all right. Uh, looking good, feeling good, playing good. Uh, excited to talk, uh, man, what ends up being a big part of every season, who's going to be on the move. We just kind of got through the off season yet. Uh, a lot of teams have almost finished their bidding. Like I, I think a lot of teams are done with free agency and they say, Hey, you know, let's figure out left field in the season. We'll have some young guys play. Maybe we'll bring in a non-roster invite. And if they click cool, if not, your team's eye and trade candidates, or maybe your team's going to be trading away some cats. Oh. Speaking of cats, Trevor Plouffe. What? Oh, cool cat. Mm. I get that. What's up, guys? How we doing today? I I, I like doing discussions like this because this is going to be kind of free-flowing. We all have some names that we put out there together, but realistically, like I said before the show, everyone's kind of a trade candidate. Mm. doesn't even matter. Everyone. Maybe not everybody. 90% of the league. Uh, is a trade candidate, but it's fun speculating to see. And we know some teams are going to be out of it looking to capitalize on a good season or a good half season. And I think that's kind of like we're all focus on mine. Um, but uh, as always, Monday episodes are my favorite because I miss the boys and I love talking ball with you. James, tell me about baby James and all those balls mm. you gave him because what a highlight of his life. Yeah, I mean, that is a very exciting present. And the basement is where he gets to hang out and the dogs aren't allowed down there. So, Ooh. like, and Katie doesn't go down there a lot. So it's kind of like boys' room because if Katie goes down there a lot, all those balls would have to be cleaned up. And if the dogs are down there, they'd be chewed. So now it's just like a ball pit. Like, I'm turning my okay. office and his playpen into a ball pit, which is very exciting. We went to the warehouse. We, we had a ton of different balls testing for the next ball in play league, which ball we're going to use for it. Mm -hmm. So I had like $500 worth of, maybe not that much. The bats were the most expensive balls. balls. So I, a lot of balls. Yeah. We kept a lot at the warehouse. James got some. It was good. It was fun. And I cooked for you, Trev. You told me, you told me you, you wanted to see me cook. So I put my cooking on Instagram for you. I wasn't going to do it. And I said, Trev said that. So then I Instagram. I I need it. Yeah. It was good. I'm excited for this episode. I've been asking for it for a while. Mostly on talking Yanks, I believe, because the Yankees situation With uh, wanting a left fielder, but weighing the options of, well, what's available right now in this market and this trade market and what's going to be available come August 30th in the middle of the season or August 1st, July 30th? I think deadline's August 2nd this year, I believe. Yeah, early August, no waivers. Uh, It's kind of the equation for the Yankees is, hey, you might be able to get through the first three months of the season and then get a much better trade package or someone might be new might be on the board that you got to weigh it against. And obviously that goes for every team, not just the Yankees, but because we are pretty invested in that world, that's where our brain was. So I'm excited. I've been asking for this for a while because I wanted to know what are the options and who do we need to be eyeing as the season goes mm-hmm. and what teams do we need to be eyeing? I know two years ago or three, I forget, or maybe it was 2021, we were like, hey, the Cubs could have a fire sale. And some people were a little upset or like, "Ah, I don't know. And then they had an absolute fire sale. And we were like, yeah, that's going to be fun. And I think there's some teams out there that are either in contention or fire sale. It's a pretty easy recipe, right? You got one or two year contracts left. If you're out of the game, you got to make your move. And yeah, I mean, (laughs) I think Cubs fans would now agree with us a couple years later when uh, Dansby Swanson's Cubs... And will they be Ian Happ's Cubs by the trade deadline? You'll have to wait and see. Oh, gosh. You'll have to wait and see. Trev, did you like that wine you sent him? Or still pitching a shutout on that? 
I still owe him a beautiful. Oh I had my two. God. You know what's funny is he he wants it in a, an Ita I think he wants an Italian red. Maybe it's a French red. I have to. No, I have he to wants go back a bottle of wine. I want to do it in person with him, people. Oh I don't get to see God. this guy. What's it's not fun to just to send him one. I had two excellent bottles of red this weekend too, Ian. Just so you know, like real top notch stuff. I should have I should have shared it with you, but I didn't. Maybe uh, I think I, I think during this episode though, okay. bringing it back to baseball, Jake. Stop, you know, coming at me. We should name a fire sale team. I have had no sex. <laughs> Trev, AG1 Athletic Greens. Before we get into it, great athletes. So maybe you five years ago, they have one thing in common. They take care of their body, and that starts with optimizing whole body health. A lot of them also take AG1 and that's why John Boy Media and Talking Baseball as a whole has become a fan. Great for recovery, before workout or after. AG1 is so much more than a powder. It's all of your key health products in 175 high quality ingredients that give you key daily and nutrients and long term gut health. Oh, if a comprehensive solution is what you need from your supplement routine, then Athletic Greens is giving you a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. Go to athleticgreens.com slash baseball. That's athleticgreens.com slash baseball. There's a link in the description. Hot. Trev, before we start, I got to give you some love. Your trip to the Twins Fest and Warehouse Willie following oh, you with the vlog. Man. That was cool. Thank you. I mean, talking. That to, was a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, Maddie Mass was editing it in the morning on Friday. We, we were both here really early and he was just cackling. And I was like, what the hell are you laughing at? And he said, Trev's funny sometimes. I can be funny sometimes. I had a joke about athletic greens and me and what we have in common, but it's a little vulgar. and mm. Okay. Diarrhea. A little, tr little try hard. I mean, me and Trev have a moment, right? It's usually right after the World Series or around a holiday where we we both tell each other, like, "Man, I think you're I think you're funny," and then we don't talk for like a week. <laughs> <laughs> we just go our separate ways. That's, That's nice. how I feel about Nikki Cass. I get a, a little taste of him. We compliment each other, and then I get disgusted, and I don't want to talk to him. So, you guys are like the same person to me, maybe. Who's batting leadoff? But thank you, James. I'll go first. Yes. I'll do an easy one. Okay, and I don't think this is even entertaining. Jesus Aguilar. He's on a one-year deal with the, mm. with Oakland. Uh, Oakland is trying to just, like, rid people. I think the only fun they can have is trades because they're trying to trade their whole franchise to another state, first and foremost. Mm. But, you know, he's signed for one year, $3 million. So you're telling me if Jesus Aguilar hits at any level and can play first base or can DH or has good splits versus lefties or righties, whatever, a team is going to be like, yeah, uh, 1.5 mil for a guy to slot in and help us out. And uh, Oakland is going to move them. So I don't know if this, I, I, I'm not thinking of a trade that's going to, and I guess maybe that was my question before we started is, are we trying to predict trades here? Are we trying to predict Trades that will change teams' outlooks because I don't have those. Because BBD said it was going to be a graphic, and I was like, "Well, I'm just going to play it safe." Because mm, playing scared, yeah. Those I, graphics will get you, no doubt scared. about that. Yeah. Doesn't have to be, but can um, be. but yeah, I mean, Jesus Aguilar can hit. He's going to be in Oakland. He's going to want out of there, and the A's always trade people. That was my thinking. It's the the annual Oakland pillage, and maybe it's a maybe it's our safest first step, right? Because it's hmm. going to happen. Um, I know we said basically not to mention relievers. Trevor May signed a one year seven deal, so you know maybe you need a reliever and a first baseman, and Jesus is popping lefties or whatever it is. There's your trade right there. I know. Uh, I think they, they signed a couple guys. It seems pretty clear they signed guys to trade them. Yeah, that's kind of their new formula. Like, okay, so if we pay a guy half their contract, keep them till June, and turn those into prospects, that's a little bit of their game plan. Sounds like the worst formula <laughs> that you could ever come up with to run a Major League Baseball team. I think a lot of people would agree with me there. Jesus never really got it going last year. He had one month in May. He had a 780 OPS. Everything other than that was under, six, or under 700. So he's going to have to figure it out there. It's... 
I it can it can be a decent place to hit at, at times, but also it just showing up to the ballpark and using the facilities. It's it can be it can be dreary and dreadful. So mm. I'm very curious to see how he responds to it. Do people go there because they have nowhere else to go? Dude, I'd love for him to get in front of like some big crowds. And I mean, since 2019, you're looking at Tampa, Miami, Baltimore. Baltimore did have big crowds last year, but he was only there for a little bit. Uh, yeah, I mean, this is either we're saying like you're either contending or fire sale. Hey, Zeus Aguilar is either like DFA or trade. Sure. I, I have one. I'll, I'll, well, let's move on to mine because it really um, is similar to this. I'm going with CJ Crone of the Colorado Rockies. Um, he is on uh, his second year of a two year deal with them. He's uh, making like eight million bucks this year, seven and a half million bucks this year. And last year kind of had a down year with them, but he's he started off really, really hot in the first half. I think he had over 900 OPS and then fell off at the end. Typically, he's had like He's kind of like split lists. Like he he hits uh, righties and lefties over his career, right around the same lefties a little better. Last year, it was reverse. He hit righties better. So I think there's probably a little bit of tinkering that went on during the offseason to get him back to where he's mashing those lefties again. But for me, I think we know where the Rockies are, um, you know, what they do. Um, sometimes they don't actually trade people who we think they're going to trade, but I think CJ Crone's kind of on a different level than that. And I can see a team like a Tampa Bay Rays going after him, someone that needs a bat and, and a guy who's going to come in and be a, a, a good clubhouse guy. And I feel like CJ is, is that guy. I think it's happening. And I think, I think there'll probably be a lot of suitors for this guy if he comes out and, and, and bangs a little bit. It's always the, the question is usually not the players on the field or the contract. This is one of our outliers because it's what are formerly my rocks doing. Um, no, man, CJ, credit to him, dude. He's been doing it for a long time now. I mean, see, yeah. you know, this guy, this guy hit 16 home runs in 2015. <laughs> he's he's been around a little bit. Uh, the last four full seasons of baseball. So if you take out 2020. 30 homers, 25 homers, 28, 29. Like, you need a little pop. Get in the crone zone, man. Um, and I know, Trev, we like style points and, you know, getting the stadium going. I think CJ had the, like, a fifth longest home run last year or something. It was one of those ridiculous ones. So if you need and, to change yeah. the whole vibe in the arena, he's got that. He He's always, always behooved me or whatever. Like, why he didn't get multiple year deals for a while. Like, it seemed like he hit free agency when no one was giving money out because he had decent numbers. He would just one year deal here, one year deal here. I think Colorado gave him the first multi in a while. But he's a good hitter. And like I said, he's a good clubhouse guy, too. I could see him banging balls off those uh, flags out there in Tampa, those division flags. Remember who hit that that mm. one time? Was that a. Uh... Dude, didn't yeah, um didn't uh Marcelo Zuna I think just crushed that. Didn't a Rosarena hit them once? Randy may have, and I again Yankees I uh, Judge. Judge hit one to a spot in Tampa I'd never seen on the field. <laughs> like I'd never seen the cameras go to that spot. Like all of us were like, wait, what? That area is there? Um, yeah. Hey, I know and he and Yeah. Well, he's I'm just gonna say like Tampa is also familiar with him. He played for them in 2018. Right. So, like, this is a, you know, not a homecoming. Could be a homecoming. Uh, but definitely they know his character. Hey, if, if you guys don't mind, I'll take you on a little Jakey ride for a second. Okay, let's do it. You know, CJ Crone, he just turned 33. And something I also want to stumble into here and let us know in the comments, like, we, we already mentioned it. The Yankees left field situation is open. They've basically announced that, you know, they're going to let some kids and different people play. And if they need to, they'll address it at the trade deadline. And it's kind of, you know, it's a way of doing business. So whatever your team may be looking for, I think there's going to be first baseman available. You mentioned Jesus Aguilar, CJ Crone, depending what he's doing. I don't think this team will be selling. I think we're competing and going for it. But the Diamondbacks, Christian Walker, he hit 36 home runs last year. 36. Mm -hmm. uh, that was seventh most in baseball. 
he's a little bit of a late bloomer when you look at his profile. Uh, he didn't get a starting role until he was 28. He had 29 homers that year, 2020 season, 2021 was down. Last year, he bounces back again. So he hit 36 home runs, seventh most in baseball, and he won the gold glove. Ooh. This guy's got two years left on his contract. If he's doing what he did last year, 800 OPS and, and popping dingers, you can get him for a year and a half. Um, you know, my snakes operate differently, and they may just be banging on the door of the wild card, so it could be out. But as you look at it, looks like there's going to be a pretty solid first base kind of DH market this year. Um, and I think this guy might be the one that's setting the tone if he runs it back from last year. I like I, that. I like that too. But now I think, well, when you talk to people around baseball, you know, Arizona is kind of on the up and up. I know he's 30 going into, or he's 31 right now. Um, is this extension? season for him is it trade season for him i think that the diamondbacks are having many internal discussions about you know who to keep uh for the future and who to go and let go and get and add the debt for the future so that's an interesting one i like that one a lot jake that's good thanks guys do they have any like they're a team full of prospects right like who's on the way to play yeah first for them? like is he gonna block anyone if they extend or Kind of. No, I I think um, Seth Beer. Seth Beer. I think Paven Smith popped over there once or twice. Like I, you know, I think if young guys need an opportunity, I, I just think it. So he turns thirty two right before the start of the season. So now okay. you're talking about thirty two and thirty three, and I I don't know. Like is is thirty four, thirty five year old Christian Walker part of? The recipe for the snakes that win the World Series in a couple years, maybe, maybe I, I could see that argument, but. I could also say, you know, if he's got if he's running it back again, that's a high value player for a year and a half. Get a couple more kids in the pot, run it, take down the Dodgers. You're putting kids in pots? Oh, you have to. That's a is that not doesn't every family do that or is that a story Ellie family thing? You take a picture the- when your kid's a baby, you put him in the pot and you're like kid in a pot. Sometimes a chef hat on him. Okay, um, that's also like a fairy tale, right? Is that Hansel and Gretel, maybe? Like, don't they get well, they get eaten? The pot? They get we eaten. don't eat the kids in my family. I'm googling. Is James blinking for you guys yeah. too? Or yeah, that's just... yeah, yeah. There's a lot of kid in pots. Well, there's not that many kid in pots pictures out there. Are we now looking at those like pictures where the baby's just asleep and people are putting them into positions like they would never get into, like in a baseball glove or you know something like that? I don't like those pictures at all. Oh, uh, not many kid in pot. Wake your baby up, dude. Like, Wake the baby like, up. A smile. Hey, and if you're trying to take some weird baby pictures, maybe you should use Roman. If you're having trouble getting it going mm. uh, on the way to making some babies, Roman is the place that can help you out. And Valentine's Day is sneaking up. Sexiest day of the year? Wow. Question mark. Nah. I had Trev's birthday. All the way in. Oh. A Trev, strong, Trev has a strong contender there. A strong sex life can deepen your feelings of intimacy with your partner and lead to increased happiness. We love that. Uh, and Roman can address that in a variety of ways. How about lasting four times longer in bed if you're having some P.E.? If you're struggling to get to that part, Roman can help with your E.D. A lot of abbreviations here, people. And they can even help with low T. Oh, there's another one. LT. Why don't you guys go to row.co? That's right. RO.co slash John Boy. That's that guy. 20% off your entire first order. And if you do it by February 8th, it's guaranteed shipping in time. RO.co slash John Boy. How about you? Had a baby. I got to trade another one that I like. Send it around, kid. I like uh, Kike Hernandez. From the Red Sox getting moved. He's he's uh, at the end of his contract. I don't think the Red Sox are going to be contenders. They might be around the wild card chase, or they could really surprise us, but I don't see that happening. I'm not trying to be like a hater, but I just don't. I don't think most people don't. Um, they finished last in the East last year. Yeah. But he, this guy's versatile. So if you're, and he's got a, he's a rental. So you're looking at like a Trey Mancini 
transition here. We can play infield, play outfield. Obviously, he's even more versatile than that. He can play shortstop and center field and go run at, at it. His offense hasn't been amazing uh, lately, but he he's had months. So I think 2021, he had a couple months of like 900 OPS. He could turn it on, hit at the top of the order, hit at the bottom of the order. He could steal bases. So I just think he's a really useful asset for a team that's plans on making a deep playoff run. So it's not like you're going to trade for Kike to become a playoff team. Like he's not going to get you mm. from, you know, a pennant race finisher, but he's a great complementary piece to a team that has the division somewhat locked up. Want to booster their depth on the bench or get some platoon rotation or whatever it is. I think he's, if the Red Sox are moving pieces, I, I would love to have him on the Yankees. Backup shortstop, backup infielder, backup center fielder. We currently need that. I'm sure a lot of teams mm. need better backup bench roles. Also brings spunk and like fun bench Ooh. guy, uh, personality. So I like him as a little sprinkle. Teams go into the postseason and they just want a clubhouse guy that can play a lot of positions. Okay. I, I I totally dig that, and I can see exactly what you're talking about with Kike. Obviously, the versatility um, is there. He's also played on some really good baseball teams, so I think some of the moments aren't too big for him. Um, Boston, I think you know you can compete. I said they were had the uh, my least favorite off season. I got crushed for that. Um, but then the Athletic wrote an article and gave him a very bad grade. And then people were like, oh, you were right, Coach Trev. You were right. They didn't have that grade of an offseason because they didn't compete enough to get back in contention for the ALEs. But if things all go right and they are in, in competition for that last wild card spot, I have a hard time seeing them trading Kike at that point. That would be like, to me, he's one of those guys that like you trade him. You're like, what are we doing here? I agree like, with he's that. A, so yeah. it's going to be interesting to see. I would love to see him, you know, on some of these contending teams. I mean, him and pinstripes would be great, but you're right. Like he, he's, he would go to a team that like is going to be in serious world series contention. So that's kind of a really nice thing to say about someone like teams that are going to win, want you on their team. Yes. And I don't think they're going to trade them if they're in contention too. I, but you know, the Red Sox are first or worse and it's looking like a worst right now. But I could be yeah. wrong. 2021, he, like Jim mentioned, he was leading off for the Sox. So if he's hot, you can put him up there. If not, you slide that guy down the lineup. And if you believe in clutch, you know, if, Trev, you say it all the time. If you went to the playoffs, it would have been different. Because oh. you're, you're calm. You're cool. Kike, 69 playoff games. Don't think the moment will be that big for him. 269, 351, and 900 OPS. And yeah. Like, like Jim also alluded to, you do you, what do you need? Center, left, right, second, <laughs> like third, sure. Like he's uh, he will be a popular name if if uh if it's not a fun summer in Boston. What's interesting is he's on the Red Sox, but he was also on something else recently. Mm. Actually, I think it comes out this week. He he'll be on the Chris Rose rotation today. I think it's out. It's today. Wow. And then might have just got out. So go check that out. I know he gets into some really fun conversations. And again, this is a clubhouse, you know, guy that everyone loves. So you slot him into your team. You don't have to worry about ruffling any feathers um, down in the clubhouse. He's a good one. So yeah, I like that one a lot, James. Sexy. Am I up? Yeah. I think you so. sure are. Okay. You guys are going to have to just open your imaginations up a little bit on this one. And not really for the trade candidate person, but for the team, I'm going to say. I think our guy, Jock Peterson, has a good chance to be traded at the deadline this year. Now, do I want the Giants to be good? Yes, I want the Giants to be good. My boy Gabe Kapler's there. We have the twin Rogers brothers there. Mm. Gotta love that. So they're probably going to play so many jokes on so many people. I would love to just like see that. I right, we're going to get a video this year of the Rogers brothers pranking somebody nice. and I'm all for it. So I'm in for that. Jock, did you guys see like kind of what he did offensively last year in limited at bats? Yes. He mashed and he mashed all season long, except for July when he uh, had a 421 OPS. So I don't know what happened in July. Other than that, he was pretty consistent with his power as well. He ended up with 23 homers on the year. 
We know what he did for Atlanta in their run. Uh, so he's we've talked about him before. He's a mercenary uh, of uh, type of player where he can come and just put you into the playoffs or when you're in the playoffs, have some massive hits. Because, again, he's a guy that's been in a lot of big moments in his career. So I like – I want the Giants to be good. I don't think they're going to be good. I don't think they're going to be in contention. What? So Jock, to me, is uh, a big-time trade candidate. And I have a team. Why do you hate the Giants? I, wow. I don't hate the Giants. Stop. Stop. Okay. Our guy Kai Correa? Mm. Hot. Hot. Anyways, I think he could end up on our team, the Milwaukee Brewers. Mm. Now, just think about a Jesse Winker going off, an Abraham Toro going off, Willie Adamas ringing that fucking bell at the end of the dugout. Can't you see Jock Peterson in there too? He's going to have a silly haircut. His cleats are going to be like crazy colors, like going off. Like Milwaukee has good uniforms. If they have anything, they got good uniforms. He's going to be doing it. And I can see him just ringing that bell so much at the end there. Maybe push him Milwaukee into the playoffs. Jock Peterson to the Brewers. You heard it here first. Well, you think he'd go back? Remember those fans were heckling him so bad? He had a no matter. run. He yelled at him. You're with us or against us. Yeah, yeah, put that uniform on, see what happens, man. Starts eating bratwurst a lot, maybe gets a little belly, add a little more mm. power, bam. Oh, if Jock went full like Matt Stairs and like that was the way. Giants are going to be one of our teams that, we, that we're going to be keyed on early this season because, I mean, Jim, I think you got a guy or two on here. I mean, the whole lineup in a way. And Ford O'Hanniger, I mean, I know they're new in town, so it's the last thing Giants fans want to be saying, but those are short contracts. Those are <laughs> if, if those guys are doing their thing, they're very valuable. They're going to be a team that I think we talk about a lot early in the season. We're going to be looking at how many home runs would have been homers for mm-hmm. Jock that weren't, and then you put them in a different ballpark. Stanton, Hicks, Yankees don't have an outfielder. Put them in the short porch. Ooh, stop talking about the Yankees. Giants have a lot of people. It's very interesting. Jock in the big city? I don't know. Jock in San Diego? Now, did we each give two now? My math? Or have you not given given yours? I have not. I, um, you know, I like seeing where you guys going and picking up on a theme a little bit. Um, I think I'm, uh... You know what? No, I'll I'll wait for the bomb. I, you know, Jock Peterson. We're mentioning some outfielders. I think there's a lesser known guy, Jim. You mentioned him. I had him on my list too. Um, and it's because it's one of the more fun last names to say in baseball. It's Anthony Santander. Uh, Santander from your Baltimore Orioles. Um, he. I'm on a big homer kick. I'm. Everyone's going contact, so I'm going homers. Uh, Anthony Santander. Uh, tied for 13th in Major League Baseball home runs last year. Now, he's a lefty masher. 900 OPS versus lefties. He's in the sevens versus righty. Switch hitter. But, I mean, we're talking switch hitting corner outfielder here. Um, and he's actually, he might be entering his prime. He's going to be 28. Um, and also with those switch hitters, a little trick for you guys, they kind of get half the reps. You know, because they got to go back and forth. So the more MLB experience you get, the better you're going to be from both sides, Trev. Okay. So uh, Santander, and by the way, he mashes lefties, Jim. So when he's hitting righty, and they just sent the fence out a mile in Baltimore. So if we can get him with a better left field situation, uh, I think the Orioles, I think they snuck up on a lot of teams last year and had that good winning energy. I don't think teams will be as asleep against them, even though they're better. I do think they're going to be sellers, and I think Santander, you're going to do it in his prime. Uh, switch hitting, kind of put him in the middle of the lineup. I like that fit for basically any the, team. I believe he'll be a you year You think the Orioles are going to be sellers? I do. I, I mean, I, I'm excited for them, and I, I'm willing to be proven wrong. Like, if Grayson Rodriguez comes up, and he is the next dude pitching, but I, I think... They snuck up on on teams last year. They had the good vibes, and the division's just really tough. That I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Their their rotation would have to really take a step up, and maybe it will. 
He's pretty good. It'd be a year and a half, so it, they'd have to be sellers and also think that they're like they can get such a return for him that it helps them in 2024 more than he would help them in 2024. And I don't know all of those equations. Teams will want him. That's for sure. They did sell last year, even though they were in contention. So that's, I mean, but but trade to your point. Yeah. But only rentals, right? Uh, Jorge Lopez. I think he was a year and a half. Oh yeah, he was. And that's, that's the thing. They have so many young bodies on the way that I think if you can get value for Santander, they kind of just showed their hand at at this free agency. It's not like they're going to become big spenders. So if Santander hits free agency at 29, um, and he's hitting 30 homers a year, you're looking at a 75 mil player or something like that. And I, they're not – the Orioles haven't shown us that they're willing to do that. It's true. Okay. He's good. I have uh, – I guess that was the wrong way to start that sentence. Okay. We Go should over, do James. We should do the big names, the game changers, because we kind of did like under the radar, not the top pieces. ones, complimentary pieces. Uh, do we have a third that we have to read? It's DraftKings. I'd bet okay. on it. We were, uh, we were thinking about saving it to the, the very end, but go place your bets at DraftKings. Man, Super Bowl 57, we get to say it because they are the official sports betting partner of the NFL. New, bus, new customers can bet just $5 and get 200 in bonus bets instantly. I mean, they've got the same game part. It's, it's a Super Bowl. You can bet on anything. Would you bet on Shohei Otani being traded? Mm. Uh, no. Because that's, at the end of the day, an organization has to do that, and I don't believe in their organization to do that. Uh, but, Trev, who you got for the Super Bowl? Don't care. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app and use code TALKING. New customers can bet $5 on Super Bowl 57 and get 200 bonus bets instantly. Only at DraftKings Sportsbook with code TALKING. Minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply. See show notes for details. I have the Eagles. Nice, dude. Favorites. Philly boy, you know? Yeah. That's what people say about me. Walk off king. Was that off Kike? Right. Am I remembering that? Yeah, it was Kike. off Kike. Wow. If you're, if you're going to watch this uh, Chris Rose rotation <laughs> episode, Chris had me send a video to Kike talking about the walk off homer. Oh. So Kike was like, bro, I don't fucking <laughs> care. <laughs> Didn't remember. Don't remember it. <laughs> He's like, well, who are you? Just, no, man. I, just yeah, to right. They playing. know me, bro. I love playing ball against Travis Plouffe, and he's a good player, <laughs> and I really respect what he did. Oh, wow. what has, I, I know Carlos Correa. What about you? <laughs> he probably does. I mean, Bill and Correa. Oh, I was talking he's to talking about me. Jake, not um, Kike. I mean, behind the scenes, Bill and Correa are boys now. They are. <laughs> yeah, I saw him at the airport. Oh. He said hi. <laughs> hey, Bill. Bill was living his best Who's life your, for that trip, bro. Who's your big one, Jim? I don't know. I gave my two. Okay. Collectively discussing the Where did you collectively? Yeah, so yeah. look. Giolito. Giolito is a very general. fascinating one for me. Yeah, you're right. Jake was going to go with the White Sox. Before this episode, we talked about that. He didn't name any White Sox. I thought that funny. was also interesting. <laughs> Just waiting until the end. Like like you said, finish with a bang. Um, because Giolito, he's, uh, this is the last year, right? And it's... Uh, it's going to be an interesting one for him. He's coming off kind of a down year for his expectations. What are our White Sox doing? I, they're one of the great mysteries of this season. Like, if, if they come out in April and they put up, what, a 16 and 10? Like, no one would be surprised. Like, that's who they were supposed to be and who they can be. Um, I, I think the one that I'm circling and I, you know, those year and a halfers, I, I feel like those are the new trend in baseball. You can get rentals any year, but. The year and a half, that's like your investment in your team. The front office doesn't have to worry about free agency the next year. It's almost two birds while getting stoned. And Yon Moncada, um, he's a guy that in his right year, he can put up a five, six war season. Had a down year last year. He's got the two years coming up. If he bounces back and they're out of contention, um, you know, a guy that can play a really high level third base, he used to be able to play some second. I don't know if he still has that in his bag of tricks, but. Again, another switch hitter. Uh, defense, you could kind of plug and play in different spots in the lineup. Like his 2021, 144 games, 263, 375, a 787 OPS. Um, 
I, I'm a big fan of his when, when he's right. Last year he kind of wasn't, but that, that would be the one for me. Um, you know, you go out. If, if they start selling, and we, talked, we started with the Cubs. That's also why I want to finish with the White Sox, a little full circle. Like, the White Sox talent, man. If we start dispersing that through the league at the deadline, it's going to be a fun one. Are we like so? I'm still looking at this roster, and I'm like, this is a decent roster. Are we just like missing it? Are we like missing something when we talk about the White Sox? Like, are we just like looking at names, and not understanding what's really going on in that organization? Because it seems really grim there right now. But again, I'm looking at the Fangrass roster research. Like, there's some players here. Like, there is a there is a squad here. And if you just, if you did the men in black and said, boom, and you don't remember anything from last year, you would love this team. Tony La is has gone. We got a new manager in there. Vibes are probably going to be a little bit better there. But it's going to be, I mean, they have to, now I think they're at the point. It's like, you got to prove it to us. Even yeah. though I look at your team, I say, you can be good. You got to prove it to us now. Because last year was so awful. I think. I think the thing is everyone was hyping him up and loved him and did last year was such a letdown and they got worse this year on paper. So that's sort of like a Bray you a Bray you out the and same Clevin too. And slightly up in the air. Hendrix is kind of an unknown right now. Um, their bullpen to start the year last year, everyone was like, holy smokes, I can't believe this got put together. They got hurt right away. Yeah. Crochet got hurt right away. Yeah. Should um, have him back. A lot in the air. Kimbrell and the Pollock trade. So that was like a double kick in the nuts. Yeah, I mean, the men in black part of it's interesting, Trev, because on, on paper, if you line them up with the Guardians and the Twins, I mean... You have to really sort through it, and and what do you like? And I mean, no, not not the Guardians and the Twins. Like any team in baseball, like on paper, this team has an, a really good roster. This this is an upper tier roster. This is a uh, tell me this isn't a top ten roster. Yeah, right? yeah, I don't know. I'd have really look at it. It's around it, but for yeah, sure. eight, nine, ten. I think you I'd probably get guys. so there's, there's much some... that the four, the four through. 12 or I would guess are just like a very muddied waters where we'll see. I mean, I, I'd love for them to be good. I'd love for them to like say, Oh yeah, I forgot. We're a great team with great ball players. Last year was just abysmal, but maybe it was the Tony La Russa effect. I hate to put it on the guy. He's a hall of fame baseball person, but <laughs> you know. that's a good drop Trev. People forget that he's a Hall of, Hall of Fame baseball person. <laughs> oh, I can't believe you said that. Giolito, though, it's interesting because, yeah, he is in his walk year. Um, he's got to have a big year, get that dollar. Mm. Um, I but I don't, dollar, I don't dollar. it's going to be interesting. Yeah, I mean, if they're in contention whatsoever, how can you give up on a guy that at one point was your ace? A lot of question marks this season for them. Any other big ones that we uh, haven't discussed? Yeah, there's this guy out in Anaheim. Mm. People really, really like him. Pretty Jake good Bettid. two-way player. Jake Bettid, no. No trade. Shohei, Shohei, Shohei. I think is going to be... I mean, I all eyes are going to be on him this summer and what the Angels decide to do. I've been on record with no inside information, but I'm on record as saying, I don't think there's a chance in hell he signs back with the Anaheim Angels. I just don't think it happens. So if that's the case, and they feel that way as well, you have to trade them. What are you going to do? You, you, you can't, that'd be a monumental mistake if they have an inclination that he's not going to sign back with them. Now, if they have some hope, that he would sign back, then you know what? Maybe you take that chance, I guess. But in my mind, they are already trying to put together packages and 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 seeing what they want, who they can get, who their partners would be 
uh, because every single contending team or a team that wants to be in the entertainment business of baseball should be after Shohei this summer. It's going to be all that we talk about. Man. All I can think about is the Mookie Betts deal and them doing something like that. Like the Dodgers saying, hey, we'll give you this guy and this guy. And I know that's not enough to for uh, Otani, but we'll eat some of Rendon's contract and take him too. And then they use that to get the exclusive rights to negotiate with Otani before he becomes a free agent, just like they did Mookie. They don't like being in bidding wars. They trick teams with money into taking stuff off the books, and you lose that player for kind of nothing. I mean, they're going to get a package back. If Why? Those guys... no, they're, no, they're not, Trev. I mean, think of. I mean, we haven't seen a pa- so Soto had two years. This is a rental. That's why they might not trade him because I I don't think they're going to get a package for a rental of Otani. It'll be good, but they're going to try and teams are going to try and eat money and lesser prospects just like the Dodgers did with Boston for Mookie. And we'll I just think the, the bidding war is going to be so high that they're going to there's going to be there's going to be it's going to be prospect laden. I don't think there's going to be like major league talent heading back, or maybe maybe, maybe there could be. Um, I, I mean, I think they're going to get a heavy load for this. I really do. I think what teams will be trading for is the exclusive rights to negotiate, more so help in 2022. You may even have non-contenders, like non-like you wouldn't guess, super in the trade deadline here just to get the winter to try and do an extension like we saw with Dodgers and Mookie. I don't know, man. Have our friends in Milwaukee give him the CC treatment. He pitches every third day. Yeah, just wear him out. <laughs> just just work. Sorry, on it. we won't sign you this one. I, but. I, I just, I don't know, man. The the owner doesn't thought he was gonna sell, and then he said no. Like, does he know what he's wanted? Does he get the final button on Otani? Because yes, yes, and I, I don't know. I, I think he's too proud to be like we're gonna lose him. Um, so I don't know. I, I want to mention Hunter Renfro before on this team because he's like clockwork. God, sometimes their team on paper looks okay, and then you have to remind yourself it's the Angels. Dude, um, that's that's another caveat on this. They could be in contention for a wild card spot. I know it's you know hasn't been that way for a long time, but people, we expand the fucking playoffs. Like we expand the playoffs. There's, there's fans a, there is a, with me a world. I wanted them to go get pitching. They didn't get it. I was a little. This is going to make them even more mad. But I'm being genuine here. I was shocked Angels fans were excited about their offseason. I really didn't think that. Sometimes I forget that Yankees fans are different or, you know, Phillies fans are, like, different than other, like, hard on your team. They're, like, pumped about their moves, which I was well, they. Thrown I by. think they did fine in their moves, James. I think they addressed what they needed to address, but there's a couple oh, big – overarching things that take precedent over that. We had like two like, teams completely rebuild their rotations and the angels weren't one of them. So they needed to be one of those teams. They brought, they brought, they brought some people in. They brought some pitchers in. They brought Anderson you in might, to be there too. You, you, where, you might not three, like them where you have the Rangers brought in. He need to be there five. Like that's the difference. Cause those guys are similar pitchers. Well, I'm rooting for the Angels. I want I this is what I want. I'm I rooting want for them to be in the playoffs. Perry the Pirate mm. and Artie Moreno to be like, what do we we're like we're on the cusp of the playoffs. I don't want them like firmly in grasp of the playoff spot. I want them to be like a half game back and all these teams throwing offers at them. I want this decision to be so difficult for them. That's what I want. I think Angels fans want that too. Don't make it easy for them. Don't be out of contention in May or June and make it easy. Like I want them to be in contention and then them to have to do some real soul searching. Jay, do you have a soul or did that leave years ago? Okay. Um, no, sold it out for all this. Um, yeah, we'll see. Uh, I mean, the Halos, we get ready for their PPP because I, you, you, TPP, excuse me. Because, yeah, I mean, there's some numbers that like their rotation last year, but that's always been the problem in Anaheim, and you could look at their lineup and love it. Like, what's Brandon Drury? 
I don't know. Um, I know Stud. if Hunter Renfro becomes available, package him with Otani. Um, I like their lineup. I do. They're going to be an interesting one. We went their lineup's over, not bad. We went over the Giants kind of quick. Last year they were. Um, they got a lot of injuries. So, um, Jim, Jim, I know you want to mention your guy Chicken Strips before. Ross Stripling, that kind of tied into the Giants argument. We didn't I thought I mentioned him. Okay. The whole Giants, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, o- Otani's going to be such a big storyline. I, I just... Soto, I mean, I'd have to re-listen to myself. They're, it kind of... Well, it made sense once he, they were like, it's going to happen. Once um, they told us. Yeah, <laughs> I, I guess that was the big... That really ticked us off to the potential of it. Um, I, don't, I think Otani's so unprecedented. I mean, literally two-way. He's two guys. It's a rental... Uh, an organization that doesn't know who or what they're about. Um, I don't know. I, it's going to be fun to watch that playoff. And Trev, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of. I think we're we're all in the same page as this. Like, <laughs> almost have it be a debate. Like, I would love if we have the 500 halos coming into the trade deadline, and they've got one of those one week windows where it's like, well, if we go four and two this week. We're two games out of the wild card, and we're not trading Otani. If we go two and four this week, there's six teams ahead of us. We have to watch them trade him for MLB talent. Be in the, like a race for the the division, and like not even the third wild card. Like you know, they got a playoff spot, <laughs> and they still trade him. But they're like, but we got MLB talent back mm. and some prospects, so they get lesser prospects. Still competing. But MLB talent to compete, and they sell it that way. And you're like, well, oh. It's not guys with like all six years left. I got like dudes with three that are pretty good. And it's just I like, want, you guys blew I it want again. the behind the scenes, like someone with a shaky iPhone, like filming Mike Trout's reaction. <laughs> like, I want to see him throw some chairs in the locker room, like run into the manager's office. I, like, I want to see this happen. Either way, like I want him to see him throwing chairs with joy as they keep Shohei and they approach the playoffs or throw chairs in disgust well, he's, as he he's cries and it. gives Shohei a hug. Didn't he uh, – don't they say like he like – gets the updates on the minor leagues and he like helps them with their draft. Like he's like super involved in it. He's like, if I'm stuck here, I got to like help you guys. Have they graduated any of their, have they graduated any of their, all those pitchers they drafted? Remember they drafted only pitchers that one. Where's that? that? A couple years ago. That was a couple years ago. Where's Detmers made it, but I I think he was like, it was so only two drafts ago. Okay. Whatever. Yeah. Yeah. He was their first round pick in 2020. I think that was their all pitching. Um, Go Angels. I love Halos. The Angels. Um, I, no the, the only other thing my spidey sense is telling me that I need to relay to the people. I think the guard dogs, Chris Rose's Cleveland Guardians, I think it's kind of the inverse of this. I think whoever the next star is that becomes available, they cash in their young chips. Like they've got all the momentum in the world. They've got a ton of young bodies. They've got another layer after that that's supposed to be coming that whoever the next guy is, do up. Um, you know, not Soto, not Otani. I, I think the guard dogs cash in some of their chips for for like a two-and-a-half-year guy, like the equivalent of Soto but not Juan okay. Soto. Wow, so like they go that. and get the big name coming yeah. their way. Have they done like that, that in recent history? I, I mean, like they kind of, they built up and then rebuilt. They would certainly do that before a signing, I imagine. They, right. They've, like, never done a free Someone with signing. their the player-controlled year, so they don't have to deal with that. Yeah, I'm just trying to think of the last time they brought in outside talent. A guy talent like that. I feel like they've just... done rentals, but. Well, Tito's feeling pretty frisky. He got a scooter back, so, yeah. you know. Things, yeah, things that was are changing inside. in Cleveland. Yeah, we figured that one out pretty quick. Yeah. The hey, uh, Fayo in the chat just laid out an incredible scenario. Mm. Um, he said he wants to see Shohei leaving the Angels dugout mid-game mm. and everyone hugging him, and we're going to get a second Mike Trout shaking his head being like, what are we doing scenario. Can you imagine mid-game yeah. Shohei trade? Oh my God. They pull him. Starting. 
Oh, yeah. All right. Man. I think I, you know. Tell us which ones you believe in, which ones we miss. There's a there's a ton. There's our there are a ton of guys that will be on the block, both helpful, not helpful, depth pieces. And then there's going to be guys that get teams. traded that we aren't even thinking of right now that have like three years of control or something like that. Who knows? One of the teams we and didn't discuss is going to be worse than we think, and they're selling everybody. One of these teams that we did discuss is going yep. to be too good, and they're mm. adding. So we didn't or you even get use the, the phrase. Go ahead. We didn't even use the phrase "slap dick prospect" once in this episode. I'm pretty disappointed. Damn, it's on us. You get oh hoppy for Marsh trade, and you're like, what? Mm. Can't even predict that. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> wow.